This video is brought to you by Driver61. Driver61 now has a motorsports store, so if you're looking to buy a new racing helmet, overalls or more, head over to driver61.com forward slash shop for some great deals. Hi, I'm Scott Mansell from Driver61 and welcome to our university series. In this tutorial, we're taking a look at how to get a good rolling start. So without further ado, let's head over and take a look at some onboard footage. So here we are on board in a 1963 Lotus Cortina with myself driving uh, last year at Spa. I had a bit of a dodgy qualifying. Uh, we didn't quite have the right diff in the car. So I think we qualified 13th or 14th on a wonderful uh, UTC uh, classic grid. Uh, just fantastic to drive with all the Cortinas, Minis, Alphas, uh, all of those brilliant cars. So even though I didn't qualify very well, it gives us a great example to show you how to get a good rolling start. Um, whether you're midfield, at the front or at the back, it's it's obviously critically important to get a good start. Now, most or a lot of race series nowadays are, are rolling starts. It, it's supposed to be a little bit safer, even though uh, we're arriving at that first corner quite a lot quicker than we would be from a standing start. Um, now, the rule should be that the safety car will lead the pack around until it peels off into the pits. And then the pole position driver should keep a constant speed uh, until the red lights go off and then everybody's free to accelerate. Now, most championships you can overtake before the start line. Some championships you have to go over um, in order. So you join me here on the green flag lap. I've been getting the tyres warm. Now, they're treaded tyres on the Cortina, so I don't have to work them too much. Um, you don't really want to get the brakes too hot because they fade anyway during the race. But you can see here we're coming towards the end of the lap at Spa. We're coming uh, down to Blanchemont. The grid's pretty much formed up. We're two by two in formation. Coming down towards the bus stop, and everyone's getting prepared. Now... At this point, you just need to be sure that you're in the right gear. Now, it's quite easy in the Cortina because uh, it's only got four gears, but then it means that if I'm in the wrong gear, it will make a massive difference to my start. So you want to make sure that the gear um, is in the correct rev range to give you the power to accelerate, but not so close to the limiter that you're going to have to change gear straight away. So sometimes you might be up and down the gears quite a lot depending on the pole position driver's pace. Obviously, if they're going that bit quicker, you might be in a, in a slightly higher gear. And if they're going slow, you might be down in second or sometimes even first gear. So we're coming down to uh, the bus stop here. Now, it's a little bit tricky at Spa because the last corner or the last two corners, the, the bus stop, the chicane down here, is, is quite tight. So it's difficult to go alongside two by two. So it's hard to keep the grid together. But if the pole position driver does his job properly, we should all make it through the chicane before they release the green flag. Now, sometimes it just goes uh, completely to a mess. And to be honest, I've been involved in some starts where it's just, it's been completely wrong, where the pole position driver has just nailed it straight away. The grids become really separated and it's not been a fair start, but they still allow the green lights to go. So hopefully in your championships, they'll be strict on this rule because I think it's only fair that if the, the pole position driver makes a, a, a run for it, makes a bolt for it, then they should restart the race because it is, just isn't fair when the, the pole position driver goes and separates the field a lot. So now you can see that we're, we're not working on the tyres at all. We're not working on the brakes and we're just getting ready, making sure we're in the right gear. I think I'm down into first here. You can see uh, the gear stick there, left and forwards. And we're just... At this point, we're trying to make sure that we're we're close to the car in front. I've slipped back a little bit here. You can see I'm changing into second because the, the grid's got a bit quicker. You've got to be careful at this point. The first thing to be sure is that you can see the lights. Now, it's very tricky to see in the video, but the lights are just down here. And you'll see me in a moment moving um, out of the way of the car in front. Now, you are supposed to keep in line with the car in front. But also in these bigger cars, you need to be able to see through the car in front so that you can see the lights so that you can get that good start. So you'll see me move around slightly um, on the run up to the to the lights. You can see just there now that they are on red all the way down here. And my eyes are on those. So I've got my eyes on, on the lights, but I'm trying to get close to the car in front and, and looking for that little bit of space that I know that I'm going to drive into if you get a good start. So 
my mind at the moment, I'm in the middle of the pack. I know that I'm uh, I'm going to be a bit quicker than the cars around me, so I should get a better start than them. So I'm looking for the space in front of me. So I've got a good space here. The guy in front of me isn't moving around too much, although he pulls over to the left. So yeah, look, you can see I'm moving around here, trying to get my eyes back on the lights. Now they've gone to green, as I actually came across the, uh, the, the car here. However, I've got a reasonably good start. At this point, I'm going to be a little bit uh, boxed in. You can see that I've got cars all around because I've had to commit to, to the middle here. I've got a good start. I'm moving forwards and I'm catching the cars in front of me, but I'm a little bit boxed in. So going forwards, I'm going to try and create myself some space here. Now, in the next tutorial, we're going to go into what we should actually be doing when we're going into the first corner because it's tricky. You can think about what other people are going to do as much as you want, but whenever you go into the first corner, you just can't predict what's going to happen. So it's important that you do drive into the space. So check out the, the next tutorial to, to see what exactly you should try and do when you're going into the first corner to try and get as good a start as possible. So we're going to leave this example here. Next up, we're going to look at a different example so we can discuss how another start might go. So next up, we're on board with a driver of mine. Um, he's new to the Radical SR3 Championship this year, so he's only done a few rolling starts um, with the SR3s. But this is exactly what we spoke about in the debrief with him after the race. So you can see here, we're at Silverstone. Um, as I've mentioned in the previous tyre warming video, the radicals actually take a lot of energy to get some, some heat in the tyres. So he's done all of that. Hopefully he's got the tyres up to temperature. And we're coming into Luffield, which is the corner before the old start finish rate, which is where this radical race was started from. Now, we're coming into the last corner here. Um, you can see here on the display at the bottom, He's in the correct gear. We're in second gear. We're at around 7,000 RPM. So the Radical revs to 10,000. So he's got enough space to accelerate into and it's not going to bog down. So he's got that right. But as we're coming into the last corner here, ideally he should be a lot closer to the car in front. This distance that we have here is just too big. Um, we should be something more like these two cars on the left hand side here, whereas on the gearbox of the car in front. The issue is, is that if the front car bolts, then you're just detached from the pack and you're, you're never going to make them make it up in this radical. So we want to be as close to the car in front as we can, a couple of meters off his gearbox. And Rich is just not giving, um, he's just not close enough to the car in front. As you can see here, he's managed to catch back up again. The cars have got on the brakes. So he's been lucky. He's kind of back with the pack now, but he's just giving... Uh, a little bit too much space to the car in front. Now, this is just a, a little bit of experience. Um, he's not quite confident being so close in the pack yet, but it's really important for him to get up and uh, up and behind that blue car in front. Again, you can see that he's still in the in the right rev range. We're up at 8,000 RPM in second gear. That's about perfect in this radical. Um, and now we've just got the the stretch to the start finish line. The driver um, on pole position should be keeping the pack at a consistent speed which he seems to be doing quite well Richard's close to the car in front but not quite close enough now what he needs to be doing here is keeping the car a little bit over to the right hand side so that he can see the lights all the way down here he's he's got a clear uh, view on the lights at the moment but you'll see in a few seconds that that will actually disappear and this is the moment now where he can't see the lights the pack have started to go and by the time he pulls the car across to the right hand side he couldn't see the lights, so he couldn't get on the accelerator at the right point but more to the point he's so far away from this car in front here that he's become detached from the pack and that really is the the, the big issue here he's you know he's probably 30 meters behind the the car when he should be trying to overtake him in front he's gone into the first corner quite well there and hopefully he can catch the pack Back up again but he could have been looking at overtaking not just sat there waiting to see what happens so I think this is a something that happens a lot for, for for new drivers when they don't have too much experience in a new category is that they they just give themselves a little bit of safety margin and that's that's all perfectly good and well because you know we don't want to go and have a crash at the start of the race we need to we need to finish the race 
um, and get all of that experience. However, we do need to begin to push ourselves and get a little bit closer to the, those cars in front so that we're attacking at the start of the race rather than defending or giving ourselves a little bit too much room. So that's the end for this tutorial on how to get a good rolling start. The main takeaways for you are firstly, get nice and close to the car in front of you, just a few meters behind him. The second thing is to make sure that you're in the correct gear. Being in the, the, the wrong gear, whether it's too close to the, the gear on top, whether you're you know going from second gear to third gear, not giving yourself enough space to accelerate into, or having the RPM down way too low so that the car bogs down, will both result in getting a bad start. So make sure that you're in that right rev range, even if the pack begins to build speed. And finally, the third thing is position your car so that you can see those starting lights, so that you can get on the accelerator as quick, if not quicker than anybody else on that grid. And that way you'll be moving forwards at the start rather than looking in your mirrors worried about cars coming past you. Thanks for watching this tutorial by Drive61. Don't miss out on any future tutorials by subscribing to our YouTube channel and our newsletter below. If you'd like to help support us, check out the driver61.com store the next time you need to make a motorsport purchase. If you'd like to learn more, please head over to driver61.com forward slash uni for more tutorials like this one. Thank you again for watching and goodbye.